So following uh, the uh, replication of the Entagma tutorial about um, using modulo to, to displace uh, user noise, I had a request to explain a bit more what uh, the modular operation does. And uh, I had a hard time understanding it uh, was some time ago until someone brought to my attention that there's one system that everyone uses, pretty much everyone on this planet, and that is uh, time, uh, hours and days. So we have uh, two ways to express uh, the hour system within our days. It's either the 12-hour clock, the normal 12-hour face from 1 to 12, uh, or a 24-hour clock. Both these are modular operations, and uh, before I explain a bit more, I'm going to do it visually using MoGraph and fields. So let's create a matrix, set this to 1, and what I'm going to do in the count is say 7 days times 24 hours. So we have an 168 hours in a week. And uh, what I want to do is stack these hours on top of each other, so we're going to have a nice little line of hours for our week. And uh, for that, I'm going to use a plane effector. I'm going to raise them by uh, 10 uh, each. And in the fall off, what I'm going to do is add a linear field. And uh, basically, I'm going to make uh, the size of it. If I click on this, you'll see we have this. Um, oh, actually, it's 167 because we, we need to count the zero. I think that's it. No, it's 160. Eight. Uh, the difference is that I haven't set the size to be nice and round. So there you go. Now this makes sense. So this is the size of our matrix, 1670. Uh, so I'm going to go here and copy this. So this is the actual size of the matrix. And I'm going to go to the linear field and make the linear field grow to that size. Now I'm going to paste this number here. And if I press enter, you see it's double the size because the way the length works, it counts from the center to either of the sides. It's kind of like a radius. So if I divide this by two, now we're going to get a linear field, which is exactly the same size as our matrix. And uh, yep, that's pretty much good enough. Now, what are the values of this uh, field? So I need to go back to my list, get rid of the colors for now. And if I go to the remapping tab, currently my field is actually generating values from 0 to 1. I want to have from 0 to 168. So 168, and because it's a percentage, I need to add two zeros. And uh, there you go. And that because you can see, nothing really happens. And that's because our list is clamped. So now the list is not clamped anymore. So we get 168 hours, one stacked on top of each other. There you go. So here we go. Each one of these is an hour. Good. So now that we have our 168 hour week, how do we divide this so that every 12 hours or every 24 hours, it starts counting again, just like our clock starts counting from the same point. There is no hour 65. It's 65 modulo 12, funny enough. So let's go over the linear field and add a formula. And in the formula, I'm just going to type mod for modulo, open the parentheses, put the sub fields, and then the semicolon. And then let's uh, choose what um, clock we want. Let's go with a 24-hour clock and close the parentheses. And I press Enter, and lo and behold, we have our seven days of the week. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Each one of these, if we count them, are 24 hours. So what the modulo does is just use the remainder of a division. I'm not going to go into details with this. Uh, I was planning to, but there's so much content on the internet. Just uh, go to DuckDuckGo, which is a great search engine, and uh, find out uh, what modulo does and how it does it. But the practical application is that we get a sequence of numbers, and we can create reoccurring patterns out of it, um, and just like our uh, watches. Uh, so our clock face will have 12 hours, and this is our 12-hour clock. For 168 hours in a week, every 12 hours we recycle the same numbers. And this is extremely interesting uh, when we start adding it um, with other effects. So let me give you an example. Now, in the previous tutorial, I used the way that was closer to the explanation that the Entagma guys did, so that you can get a, a general sense of how we can replicate certain things uh, inside Cinema 4D. But that doesn't mean that we 
couldn't have done this in a more simplified manner. So there are about a million ways to do the same thing. And I'm going to show you one more additionally to the one we did yesterday. So first of all, I can use the blending here. And some of these blending modes actually achieve interesting results. So normal does this. If I set it to min, blah, nothing happens. Subtract creates a stepping effect where each step has a length of our modulo number. Fantastic. What else can we do? Multiply creates something which is very funky. Overlay is something which is differently funky. There are many different types of funks. Maximum, there. Add, ooh, add, interesting. So this would be very close to what we were trying to achieve yesterday. And it just goes uh, like a nice increasing sawtooth. Fantastic. Well, let's see the other things. Screen, ooh, funkiness, clip, nothing. So let's go to add. And this is quite interesting. Now, I'm going to do something else just for the fun of it. Let me put it on normal to begin with because this is uh, quite fun. Instead of a linear field, I'm actually going to use my noise. So I'm going to use a random. And you can see this little randomness here. And I need to change a few things. So the first thing I need to do is go to the field and set a noise, a nice Perlin noise. And uh, what else do I need to do? Oh, the values. Remember, the values shouldn't be from 0 to 1. They need to be from 167. Uh, they need to be up to 16700. So 16,700%. Anyway, um, my brain just froze. Uh, that's not very uncommon. So go back to field and let's increase the scale so that we can actually get a nice little pattern here and turn off this U4 plane. Very helpful, but no thanks. And now we have this uh, two-dimensional noise, a uh, Perlin noise. And what happens if I put this under the formula? Look at that. It's actually chopping up that noise. And it's taking, so these two, and then if you put this... Um, underneath and then that underneath that so it's like a a puzzle and uh, it's the same noise it's just chopped up every 12 it gets chopped up and it's put next to each other which makes it extremely interesting let's see how more interesting this can get if i tell mr matrix to have let's say more on the z axis and let's turn on uh screen space screen space ambient occlusion that's a mouthful and uh, why not go to the random field and add some animation and press play and you can see now that we get a very interesting pattern which is um interesting uh, and a bit more interesting than this because this is just a noise as expected but this is a broken up noise and uh, because we can do it i'm actually going to apply this as a deformer on a plane so i'm going to get rid of my matrix and I'm going to create a plane. And I'm going to make my plane 400 by 400. And I'm going to use 168 whatnot uh, divided by 2. And I don't even know. I'm going to make it 1500 by 1500. I'm, I'm trying to be you know, smart here. And uh, the next thing I'm going to do is make the plane effect a child of the plane. The plane effect a child of the plane. Yeah. It rhymes. Make sure that because now we're dealing with uh, normal, we we set the value to be on the z axis and tell it to deform the points. And look at this. We're getting pretty much an equivalent effect. And if I go here and in the fall of, I turn this to normal and this to add, just like, like I did before. This is what happens here. I get that same effect by just using a noise and a formula with a different blending so as you can see there are a million ways to achieve the same result and uh, hopefully let's put the smoothing here and uh, yeah hopefully this gives you some more insight on how the modulo allows us to create these um, stepping sawtooth patterns and uh, how we can play around with them and create all sorts of interesting uh, effects and uh, did I want to do something else? Oh, yeah, if you just want to make this a bit uh, less uh, high, you just go to the plane effect and you change this value to something like 2. And uh, look at this. Now, isn't that beautiful? Well, thanks for watching, and I hope that this gives you a bit more of an insight on what the modulo does. And uh, even if you don't understand how it does it, you don't need to. You, all you need to know is understand how your clock or watch works. And if you can't do that, there is nothing I can do for you.